My name is Mario Foster. I am the director of the chair at the Open University of Catalonia of Digital Economy, uh, sponsored by the local council of Barcelona and Demons. It's been running for four years. But before that, we had already been working on this topic for four years. And we would like to tell you, as part of our academic program, we have a program called Max Impulsa, part of the Feminine Digital Economy and Solidarity Project. Alberto and I will present it and then explain three different projects that have taken place to promote digitization. I'd like to give Alvaro the floor at this time. Alvaro Podro is the Commissioner for Social Economy and many other things. And someone I admire a great deal, someone with whom I've had the good fortune to coincide for nearly the past 30, but let's leave it at 25 years in a number of different activities to promote these principles. We're working with these now, but we've had others in the past. And I'm very excited to have him with us here today, sharing the stage. Alberto, go ahead. Thank you, Mario. Between that introduction and the beer I just drank, I feel very at peace. Is it in Spanish or Catalan? Spanish, okay. As Mario says, I work on social economy at the Municipal Government of Barcelona. We've just opened a new facility here in Orta, and that's why we were not here this morning. If you're not familiar with it, in 2015, uh, the Municipal Government of Barcelona made a, a major effort to promote uh, social economy and digitization even back to the beginning of the 20th century and late 19th century, has always had a very strong uh, sort of association community in that area. And there's been a revitalization movement and a generational takeover. And with the 15M movement, the pro-independence process added new drive to social economy debate, and the municipal government has worked along those lines. Today we gave a summary of it, so I have it very much on my mind. From 2015 to now, there have been more and more activities at many levels, services, programs, financing, subsidies, and so forth. There are a number of things out there right now, and a network that has been renewed and strengthened. And we're going through a very interesting phase at this time. And it has a very uh, relevant feminist outlook. And we were just uh, collecting some data 60% of Barcelona Activa, our entrepreneurial promotion service, are used by women or for women. Barcelona Activa is the local development agency of Barcelona, the Barcelona Municipal Government. It is a center to support entrepreneurial efforts, training, education for your job profile, supporting companies with a lot of emphasis on digitization. It's been working for many years, and I think it works quite well. But in social economy, as did not exist until a few years ago, it's been one of the main changes. And in that framework, and with Mayo, as we knew each other from other projects, we knew that digital things, platforms. It was just when Airbnb was coming out, Uber was coming out and all of this. And we realized, I must admit that following in her wake and the people from Demos, we saw how important this was to propose transformational messages, 
digital transformations, digitization. This whole disruptive area that was just starting, we had to get into it in some way and providing many opportunities and many challenges. And there was a mix of collaborative economy of everything from Wikipedia. And other platforms, the delivery platforms, food delivery. Nuria could tell us much more about this. There's a whole mixture. And we started to separate things, establish criteria, promote projects that had a social economy outlook with a digital and platform bent. And we've been working on that for some time to open new pathways that way. Within that framework and different iterations, we began this shared chair. And like all organic processes, we went from phase to phase. It wasn't just like a mushroom that appeared from one day to the next overnight. Of all the work that we've done on social economy and our master plan has a horizon of 2030, and it's very wide ranging in Barcelona. In Barcelona, we don't have a very clear figure. We don't have the figures broken down by municipality, but 4,000 to 4,500 organizations between co-ops, organizations, associations. That doesn't mean that all of them are identified with the social economy, but there is a network of some 1,500, 2,000 organizations that have a certain relationship and identity of a certain size. This involves many people, a lot of projects that have come about in the past 10 years and that have grown a lot in the past 10 years. So there is a revitalization and renewal process going on. In digital matters, there are different challenges. We can discuss all of them. One of them is the feminist challenge, though we often include this in our discourse. There are many things that are still missing and many elements that we have not properly integrated yet. But we have that challenge and others. Another one was digitization. Social and solidarity economy is a step behind this. Other areas of conventional economy. So we began to work on it with a program that would provide the tools for the social and solidarity economy of the city could uh, not miss the train, so to speak, of digitization. Not just talking about companies, cooperatives, groups, or what have you, that have a business model based on digitization, but whether or not it's based on it, you have to be on that train. That is the project we've been working on. And there are projects whose business model is to be a platform. That's why we call it platformization, which is a somewhat awkward word, but it's about how to generate platforms, business models based on platforms, but from a social economy standpoint. The platform model does not necessarily have to be based on savage capitalism. We've been working on that for some time, and in the explanations that we give later, you can see what we've done, what possibilities are, and that has been our attempt, our intention, and we have much left to do. We are beginning to design a new phase with ePro4 Barcelona, a new area, new facility we're opening in Sants next year with a new cooperative and a number of other things. And we are very much open to and interested in any ideas you might have about how this might work. We don't have a clear roadmap, nor do we know the best path. I have to admit that the merit of Manchin Pulsa and others it belongs to Demos, a very motivated team and a quite pioneering team. We have facilitated what we've been able to do and learned as we've done, and that's about it. Thank you for that, Alberto. And now, just to go back and recover the research outlook. 
when we created the chair, the chair of digital economy, it was a way to see how a government institution like the municipal government of Barcelona and the Open University of Catalonia could join forces to drive another digitization model. It was during the COVID-19 pandemic when we were in lockdown. The social economy, this bit of unfinished business and digitization, as Alberto said, you didn't have to sell it to anyone. They came looking for us. We had been involved in this digitization education effort, but now everyone came to us trying to digitize. That is when we came up with the Match Impulsa program as a working group in our chair. Working in a very fluid way, you see us two up here, but there are many other people who aren't up here in Demos and in the Commission of Social Economy at the local government level. So it was a public-private cooperation effort. With Match Impulsa, what we've done is to work as a research group for Barcelona Activa. This is a program to drive digitization within the framework of Barcelona Activa, something that they offer their companies. And for Demos, it is a research methodology. As part of the research and action elements, as Lewis said almost a century ago, if you want to understand something, try to change it. That's what we are trying to do. And by researching, if you want to understand what values of digitization could be aligned with social economy and what could work, try to do it. Then, Match and Pulsa is a program based on the offer of digitizing services, but then we take all of these data and analyze them. And now, Nuria Vega will speak to us, and she is writing her doctoral thesis on this, and she will give us the conclusions of the research project. But just to contextualize it and to help the colleagues who are here from COST, from other countries around Europe, for them to situate themselves. It's not a coincidence that a program like Match Impulsa, now uh, they want to replicate it in Amsterdam, in Brazil. It's no coincidence that it has come in Catalonia. Catalonia has been a region of reference for digital innovation and social economy, but digital innovation, just to give you a couple of figures, in 2001, when the Wikipedia appeared after the Wikipedia in English, the next one was the Wikipedia in Catalan. In 2011, the first International Congress of Digital Rights was held here. We had, in the end, a charter with an impact on the regulations of the European Commission, Lula's government in Brazil. It had an international impact. In 2014, the European Commission chose the 10 projects, the 10 leading platforms from around Europe, and of them, three of them were based here. That's just to give you a few elements. In 2016, when Alberto knocked on our door and said, listen, uh, you're having an impact the, in the city. What are you doing? What should we do? And we said, these people? You have to tell them that they're not a uh, collaborative economy. But we've had collaborative econ economy here for many years. So there's uh, a lot to be said about the extractive economy of Airbnb. A lot has been done there. Barcelona and Amsterdam are leading the network of cities to form a lobby before the European Commission, but also to balance the forces with platforms like Airbnb. If the cities join together, they'll have more power. That was also 
uh, articulated from Barcelona. In addition to that, the promotion policy. In 2016, that was when we created this convergence of the sector and also the Shared City Summit. And we had 50 cities come to Barcelona to draw up a declaration of principles of cities for a truly collaborative economy that is aligned with rights. That is the challenge. The basic underlying challenge in the context of Match Impulsa. And so, when it comes to the Match Impulsa program, our platform model that was predominant at that time with the big corporate platforms was not the model we wanted to promote. We wanted to promote a model with the tradition of the principles of social economy. And we were also very aware that digitization and technology is not neutral. If you digitize, it transforms you. The evidence of the research tells us that digitization is reinforcing gender inequality. And so when we think of how to design Match Impulsa, it has to be Match Impulsa to drive digitization, but not just any digitization, but one that is aligned with the social solidarity economy and the principles of democratic governance and solidarity government, but also feminist government, because digitization increases gender inequality. And since social economy, following COVID, we were all saying, let's digitize, we have to digitize. Digitization involves an organizational transformation and many changes. So when those changes take place, when that transition takes place with digitization, as we know that di digitization, if you have the digital knowledge and many other elements, we know that it increases gender inequalities. Let's put them together. Digitization, at the same time, we have feminization. At the same time, we promote equality plans adapted to digital plans because equality plans often are not adapted to the contractual context of the platform, leaving out social production measures, the false self-employed workers, and other, other workers employed by platforms, not to mention algorithms, how they work, and the impacts they have. So we said, let's have Match Impulsa to digitize, platformize, and incorporate measures of equality in digitization of social solidarity economy. We knew that according to our research, the cooperativism of the platforms, this pro-social aspect of platforms often doesn't work much better in terms of gender than capitalist platforms. Therefore, it was a necessity. And Nuria will give us a presentation on the data when we say that Cooperativism as a platform does not work in terms of equality. It's not just an observation, but through Match Impulsa and through our research methodology, we have specific data on the sample of 27 organizations that have participated. Only one third have equality plans because cooperatives, if they have fewer than 50 employees, don't have the obligation to have an equality plan. At a lower scale, the equality measures are not applied because if they don't have more than 50 employees, they don't have to have equality plans. And then you would say, that's a shame because cooperatives have a scale that would allow you to work well at the local level in a more democratic way, but the equality plans just aren't implemented because of their size. The structure has not been favorable. Thank you. 
So with this entire context that we've given, we promoted Match Impulsa, bringing together the local council of Barcelona, Barcelona Activa, and us as the research project, and Nuria. After this whole preliminary explanation, now Nuria is ready. She is now going to present Match Impulsa as a program. Buenas tardes. So, good afternoon. I'm going to stand up because, yeah, I think it's been a long day. Hang on. We need to make the most of the session to, yeah, have a breather, have a chat about the results we had last year. No, not last year, 2021, when we developed our program, Match Impulsa. So, uh, let's move on to the next slide. I'll kind of, you know, signal like that. And I'll give you, like, you know, headlines on what we've seen based on a small qualitative sample of 27 Barcelona organizations working in social economy who decided back in the day to join Match Impulsa to transition towards a digital business model. Initial result, the very conceptualization of the program versus all the digital accelerization process which have been developed in Europe. We, with our alliance, we're deploying a program with, uh, which brings together five elements, as you can see on screen. We had training, uh, mentoring, funding for projects. And there was also networking. At the center of it all, in the conceptualization of the project, we said that this was a project which was a, a feminist in a cross-cutting way. And that was part of the headlines of the program. What did that mean? That meant that what was an action research program we specified a series of elements which were our red lines, which is what you can see on screen. Uh, for example, developing a digitization program with clear uh, impact, uh, uh, sort of gender impacts, working on parity, not just uh, uh, equality in the people who are who were going to receive the training, but also on the trainers as well, and then. Uh, corporate mobilization, we called upon social economy companies who were providing digitization uh, services, but also digital companies who were providing, let's say, let's call them feminist services. And then we had the challenge that we were offering with uh, the uh, Department of Gender Transversality that the social companies participating in the program could be uh, accompanied so that if they wanted to develop an equality uh, program, they, they would be supported. And second, um, you know, in this path towards digitization, what are the challenges when it comes to gender equality? So there was support there you know, on gender equality, more later. Moving forwards, as a result, we had a series of ideas that we wanted to share. I wanted to mention that the program itself was a, a kind of a program of programs. I could speak on this for hours. But for example, when it comes to strategic guidelines, there was an element that was an, a line on uh, platformization, so a proposal for companies to be trained to speed up and ac have access to a program with funding. Then there was a strategic line on a strategic ecosystem. For example, in 2021, Barcelona was capital of sustainable food, and one ecosystem was food. So one ecosystem we worked in, another one was the feminist ecosystem, and then there were projects that uh, were working on both. And then there was a line on, okay, let's map, let's offer, let's create a directory 
to bring those companies to light, the people who are offering services on digitization or feminism, who are these key cooperators. Now, value elements. May I? I'd like to say something about the program. In platformization, there were three programs. An initial one with 133 companies with training, a second one with 27 companies, the ones we've analyzed and will present the results in a minute. Out of these 27 companies, uh, what we saw was we provided mentorship and support for their development of their platformization program in time. And then there were nine companies who, apart from mentoring, we provided support through a crowdfunding campaign to provide funds to develop their platform. So there were different like levels. And with strategic corporations, I wanted to mention that the program is called Match Impulsa because it helps establish matches. We realized that a key for social and solidarity economy digitalization is the lack of digital uh, knowledge. People don't know how to relate or they don't have easy access to professionals of the digital world. So, for example, the Match Tech program established matches between companies who wanted to digitalize and companies or other cooperatives who offer technical services so that they could understand one another because like holding a technological brief is something that in social economy people don't know how to do it or how to interact so that was the idea to do a technological match or an equity match amongst the companies participating from social economy and companies specialized in uh, feminist uh, plans and technological plans to, to to strike a match because you know there was that kind of lack of dialogue okay so going back to what mayo was saying we wanted to uh, uh, provide momentum for social economy companies giving them access to funding and something i wanted to mention is that within the program um, it's, we didn't provide uh, access for social economy companies to have a series of resources, I don't know, like the, the, the council does sometimes, no, with funds or subsidies, no. We thought that what was interesting was to do much funding. And here we have our companies from Modeo. I'm going to describe what happened now and they might correct me if I'm mistaken. But the idea was to say, okay, so we are going to provide uh, an opportunity for organizations who want to develop a digital platform so that they can test uh, alter new alternative forms of funding. So we developed this formula. The idea was that citizens uh, could somehow provide support for these organizations um, saying, yeah, right, okay, so your uh, business model, yeah, I like it, I like it, so I'm going to give you my funding. And then it also meant that thanks to that support that the, the projects had from citizens, uh, the, the chair of the university meant that they had a series of uh, resources. So we had that much funding. We did it through Goteo, which is a very specific platform. Uh, it is uh, Goteo is a platform that provides open data, blah, blah. So what we wanted to underline is that all in all, the eight projects accessed 125,000 euro through this much funding formula. Out of the 125,000 euro, 40,000 and a bit, were contributions from citizens. And that was an exercise of transparency. We decided to use a completely transparent platform like Godea, which shows where the resources come from and it's open to everybody. And we wanted to use it in our program. Now, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, these are the eight platforms that were developed. And uh, in fact, they're now up and running. Uh, 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 indeed, we're going to listen to a couple of them who received funding. 
and another project that participated in Match Impulsa. So let me move on. On strategic partnerships, if you now go into our website, Match Impulsa, you'll have the directory. It is a resource open to all social economy uh, organizations in Barcelona. We just wanted to share it because it's open to you know all of you who are part of the uh, fabric of the city so that you can bear it in mind. And we have now just lost the slides, but at any rate, I do think that as a snapshot of results, that's good enough. We now want to listen to our colleagues. I'm going to invite them to come and sit with us. But yeah, as a snapshot, that's enough for us to have an idea of what was cooked at the time. And we're still working on it in a different way. Uh, hang on. Results in practical terms? Oh, sorry, I didn't say that. Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting. Yeah, sorry. Uh, equality practices that we can see in these 27 organizations that we're moving towards the development of a digital platform. I want to underline that we asked organizations whether they were developing databases uh, with gender segregation or whether they were mm, facilitating access to training on an equal footing amongst their workers. And we asked whether the organizations were implementing uh, anti-harassment protocols or anti-discrimination protocols. Uh, so, yeah, we asked about a series of things. Now, what's interesting is that something we asked about was whether organizations were developing some kind of measure to foster uh, women workers having uh, what we in Spanish we call fixed permanent contracts. Well, only 30 percent uh, had it. That was the lowest score out of the nine practices. Only 30 percent said they were doing that. Why is that relevant? Well, this kind of result, this kind of practice, these nine practices that we looked into, they told us about whether uh, these social economy organizations where 80 percent of uh, those 27 said that, yes, they were aligned with feminist values or that they were working with vulnerable communities. We wanted to check whether those values were actually there reflected in the implementation of those nine practices. Those nine practices were very varied. It's not the same thing to have a fixed permanent contract or to work on uh, neutral or inclusive language, which was had a higher score or whether we they were fostering telework. I mean, through COVID, you can imagine they were really high scores. So that was it, you know, my uh, headline, something I wanted to underline in those nine measures. We saw that the implementation was limited. Yeah, out of the nine practices, we saw um, most, well, in most cases, the result was that at most about 30 percent of the companies uh, fulfilled those practices. I mean, they're sort of different uh, companies each time, but about 30 percent. I'm sorry, because we did have a slide on that, but we can't see it. Well, I don't want to go on about it, but I keep, you know, having flashes of ideas I had prepared. Uh, for example, we wanted to see how the projects are moving towards uh, their business model. Something we wanted to stress was whether social economy organizations were developing, well, what kind of metrics they were developing, whether they were financial metrics or whether they were working on some kind of indicators to see, I don't know, impact of social communication. That, uh, uh, sorry, digital communication, things like that. We saw that in the whole of the sample, uh, results show that mm, they're not implementing these, these indicators. For example, we asked about um, 
I mean, I'm sorry. I don't want to go on about it. I, I keep I keep talking, don't I? We saw that feminist organizations had that percentage versus the rest of the sample, it was a lot lower. So they had uh, their challenge was even higher. Yeah, as Nuria was saying, we analyzed equality practices amongst those nine practices, but we also analyzed digitalization and platform platformation processes. And our conclusion was that there was a big uh, impulse, a desire to become digital and digital uh, ambitious digitalization processes. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's there. Alvaro was saying it, it was also typical of the COVID pandemic uh, moment. But uh, if we have a look at the amount of money that companies uh, devote to digitization or the percentage of internal workers that work on digitization or the corporations they have with external partners, that's very limited. So yeah, you're telling me that you're very ambitious, but you're devoting very few resources, the capacity or capacity to use specialized resources or to generate economic resources to develop these projects. So yeah, there are lots of ideas. There's a huge potential, but digitization is very expensive and that has to be borne in mind. So we need to think of the future of social economy. Uh, what is it going to be? Are we going to go for uh, digitation? Um, the platform model is a possibility. Um, platform cooperatives, they have more members, but we need to realize that there is a very controversial systemic element because platform has certain uh, levels of uh, requirements which are limited at the moment. Yeah, I was now having a look at our summary of egalitarian practices. We had uh, the comparison of cooperatives and feminist organizations. We saw that uh, in funding channels for social economy uh, programs. We asked them about the nine alternatives and the result was 2.6. In feminist uh, organizations, the result was even lower, like 1.5. And I wanted to mention that in the program, we also provided training and tried to find out how social economy projects were working with flow economy. Um, tools and others. Yeah, open, free programming. Yeah, that's what I meant. And out of the 27, 11 were working flaw, and 11 of them were feminist uh, initiatives. This is important to see how they are incorporating this kind of tools. And uh, now I think it's time to invite our colleagues, projects who were part of Match Impulsa. So, Ile Mireya from Venestarum, Suara, Eva from Sumsum, and Natalia from Femnoise. They're going to present their projects and yeah, let's have a chat. Okay, let's start with Mireya. Good afternoon. My name is Mireya Sanglas Nogueira, and I'm here to tell you about our adventure with Baby Startup. But before I do that, before talking about Baby Startup, excuse me, let me tell you how it came about. SWARTA is a cooperative devoted to care for individuals. We have over 40 years experience. We are a non-profit cooperative and we are devoted to caring for people throughout their entire lives from the first childhood, second childhood, adolescence, home care, elder care, the whole thing. This year, it marks three years in which we entered the fantastic world pandemic. And we were locked down, but since we were caring for individuals, 
Swarda was on the streets working with all the anxieties and fears of catching COVID, of not knowing exactly what we were doing, but we were there. And by listening to the people that we were working with, and the situations that we were going through, the organization wanted to be by their side. The only way to do that was the online format. So with the generosity of psychologists, physicians and coaches, we put together a website in just one week. And we had a partnership in which these professionals could accompany individuals from those days. There's something I like to remember, a statement that I like to remember. One of our employees, our, our colleagues said, we've learned how to caress with our eyes. And I said, we can't limit this just to our cooperative. We opened it to any companies, anyone who needed this space. When in June 2020, the COVID tension began to go down a bit at that time at SWARTA, we thought more than ever, we had to be by people's side in this online format. So we began to do that, got to work on that. And as of now, it's the project that we're here to explain. Next slide, please. What is Benestardum? Benestardum is a web platform in which we want to listen to a company and provide support to individuals who work at companies. How is this done? We do this by online appointments. If we could have the next slide. It is a 100% online platform where we offer short individual and group sessions in brief formats because we want to listen and be there and support each other but in an agile way and by naming those emotions and those things that happen to us we also do this because at the individual level 20 minutes is something that we can afford sometimes an hour is too long but you can usually find 20 minutes out of your day and promoting the companies assigning those 20 minutes to be done during the workday that's an important part of people's well-being group sessions are based on the same concept of being quick just half an hour to work on very specific things with the teams open sessions they are always live group or individual sessions we don't have a repository of sessions inside our platform we offer missional support physical counseling nutritional counseling accompaniment in cases of severe diseases such as cancer and tailored services it's absurd for us to have a message and projects if the company has other needs. In addition to these projects, there are other programs that we've activated, such as Feeding Change. It's for people who have BMIs over 30. That means they're overweight. We want to accompany them to have health habits, to improve their diets, and that may have an impact on their weight. But the most important thing is their health and something I've left out, which is important to us. We're not a marketplace of professionals. The professionals are from SWARTA. We have two profiles. We work as a team. We meet as a team. We decide and evolve the platform as of now. In June, it will mark our three year anniversary of this project. We have over 7,900 people registered in our platform, almost 2,000 visits or appointments. And what we're proudest of, and I'd like to congratulate our team, we have a 4.8 out of 5 rating, and that gives us all the encouragement we need to continue with the platform. As of now, 
and over these past three years, we have eight companies who believe in Benistardum of the tertiary sector and other organizations from other industries and sectors. What they share in common is that they want to promote the well-being of their employees. If the employees are well, the company will be well. We are the health of the company. If the employees are not well, the company will not do well. So we're very happy to uh, have reached this point. We're almost at the break-even point, but we still have a ways to go. And in conclusion, we entered this with Match Impulsa. As I say, we are a cooperative, a traditional cooperative, but we're also a nonprofit. The monies that we do make, we reinvest it in the co op. And so when the organization decided to digitize, to choose this pathway, that's uh, what we decided to do to advance. And some final basic facts. We believe that we are a feminist cooperative platform. Our governance model is based on the co cooperative model with the values and actions that that entails. And we are fortunate to be a cooperative. And why are we an online cooperative? Because we're just 100%, we are 100% online. All of our professionals are around Catalonia. Now we've added a person from Madrid. So no matter what, we must do our work online. As I've said, all professionals are from inside Suarda, who are external. And these physical therapists, psychologists do their entire shift, although we don't have work schedules. We can expand the schedule as necessary. The professionals are the masters of their own calendars. Their availability can vary from week to week. If they know, they, they will know if they have appointments with 24 hours advance notice. If they have a reserved appointment, they will collect on that even if the person doesn't show up for their appointment we still pay them for being on the platform and in addition to this compensation we pay for these sessions above the collective bargaining agreement level so that's another added incentive and we are feminists 86% of the people who use the platform are women the majority are projects that we work on in caretaking, caregiving, giving visibility to that, and this recognition, caring for the well-being of people who are devoted to caring. So thank you for your attention, and let so, let yourself be taken care of, and if it's by Benestardum, all the better. Thank you. So then we have a... Well, I'm afraid that our story is not as cool as theirs, but we didn't know we wanted to be part of the social economy either. We were a bunch of women from the music industry and back in 2019, uh, a group had got together and we were out DJing and we were standing up for women and non-minory people on stages, knowing that there is only about 20% of us in big festivals and gatherings. So we decided to get together and do gigs. So much so that in 2019, we closed uh, Primavera Sound and uh, I got lots of messages from worldwide asking us to represent other women in Israel, in Africa, in Latin America. And we just didn't have the capacity to do that. And we didn't feel that we could say, OK, I'm going to represent you because you're good, but not you. But well, I didn't feel I could do that. So one day before the pandemic in 2019, I thought, OK, I set up a platform, you know, and uh, what, when I was trying to represent my Indies uh, promoters, which is the ones who hire women talent for festivals, they were saying, yeah, but there are not enough uh, women or non-binary uh, people to be 
on festivals and I kept saying, but that's not true because I have lots of women asking me. So I thought, okay, let's create a platform where we can all go on this map. And we wanted to see how we could possibly do that. So we go to Barcelona Activa on another program called pre-incubation. Um, we didn't have a model, we didn't have a, a, a legal figure, so we were selected, shortlisted, because they liked the idea, and that was the idea, you know, a pre-incubator mm, idea well, that led to a startup. Yeah, great, brilliant. But halfway through, we realized that we were being taught how to be a successful startup, and then, you know, once you've done it, you have to sell it and make millions. And when I was, I had just finished a manual for the for social uh, economy for Jutz and York in England, which talks about how to set up methodological change at university to teach social economy. And then I was meant to be setting up a startup. Now nah, that didn't, that clashed. So there was this program that led us towards social and solidarity economy. And we realized that as social company, we could also generate business, but a business where in the end there was a kind of reinvestment for ourselves as a society or as a group of women all over the world. And that led us to creating a platform which now has four functionalities and growing with over 3,000 women worldwide. You can find them all on our map. I keep saying that we are all like the Galliano poem saying that there are we are lots of little fires worldwide. You know, we're all of lots of little fires making music. What's the benefit for women and non-binary people? Well, we have this map, which is like a search engine. You can look for talent or professionals in the music industry or uh, workers of this industry. Then we have another site where we created Nooks Nano Courses, uh, where uh, the platform lets you, as a platform user, share your knowledge with others. Because we felt that uh, something that was missing in the industry was that we didn't have reference. Women don't study or don't join the industry because there are no reference. The industry is full of men. So we decided to set up this platform where you could access courses. You could even create your own course. And the only thing we requested was that you know, it, it had to be something affordable, not 100 euro, not 500 euros, so that all women or non-binary people all over the world could access those courses. Another functionality, how to look for a job, because there were women offering things all over the world and we could dynamize things and help them sell their talent. So that's what leads to our second leg, Femme Market Noise, which is it, not just through the program, but also thanks to a lot of people who helped us through Godeo, which was a brilliant experience for us, the crowdfunding initiative. We were launched in Binne, Bogota last in March, and now in May we're going to set up the platform itself with the initial uh, products in Bogota, once again, because Latin America is heaving with people who want activism, who want to cooperate. Now, this marketplace is a kind of marketplace where women can offer products or services for free. This platform is for free for users. You have to provide two or three percent of what you are uh, selling to fund the servers and stuff that is necessary to have the noise and the market up and running. Something else we realized, and I apologize because I'm taking up your time, that we also needed to become de-virtualized. So we started doing gender hackathons where we go through festivals with groups of women uh, with huge catharsis where we all tell our problems and we try to find solutions through technology because thanks to this, Technology allows us to be in different parts of the world trying to help other women or help ourselves to monetize, to generate better relationships, to create synergies. I mean, there are amazing things that have happened there. For example, uh, companies or, or tours which have uh, appeared thanks to uh, artists worldwide which met on the platform or uh, records being put together with people worldwide and then the master is done in Israel or whatever. We do not have a commercial purpose. We are non-for-profit. Uh, thanks to what we did with Match Impulsa, we managed to 
consolidate us ourselves as a non-for-profit association. That's what we still are. We have some 3,000 people in our platform from all over the world. Please come and see us. We had a short video about the functionality. Could you press play and I'll let my colleagues go on now. We were hoping to see the video. I mean, I know that this happens. I always get this with music. Uh, uh, please, could we press play? I mean, it's a, it's a short play on the platform. Can we? Yeah, go on. Are we going to fill this silence? I mean, I'm patient, but we can feel the silence. Are you, any of you from the music industry? No, you're all university professors or economists or stuff. You want to find out about music? Join us. Come to our platform. There are really cool courses. People learn a lot. And if you want to set up your own course, come and join us. In fact, we wanted to do something about how to create associations because many women get in touch with us about how they can set up their own organizations. There are women all over the world trying to close the gender gap in the music industry and they don't know how to do it, how to create associations to get resources and stuff like that. And we're trying to provide support. So any idea will be welcome. Yeah, Natalia, looking at you. Are we going to have that video? We've got a secret for you from today. You can help us hack the gap with four magic words information, resources, opportunity, and mutual support. Concepts which are part of the pillars of our new functionality. FEM, Market Noise, the first marketplace of digital feminist economy for the talent and self-management initiatives which characterize our music association for women and dissidents in Latin America. Uh, no, please go on. It, we, we can hear it. Yeah, go. At Fem Market Noise, users will be able to buy and sell products or services from the ecosystem of the music industry worldwide, tangible and intangible. We will be a big repository of contents coming from women and dissidents of the music industry, facilitating their visibility, dynamization allowing access to new forms of monetization and new paths to keep on with initiatives in an ever-changing industry. We are based on the principles of the cooperative organic economy sustained by networks which look for change in an industry which has left us aside. Through our platform, we develop new ways of obtaining profit and from talent, we're motivating the presence of women and dissidents. We are professionalizing the emerging creative talent. We are empowering some represented creation. We dynamize global cooperation and we are fostering a disruptive change. Join Femme Market Noise, the first marketplace for women and diverse agents of the South American music industry. And that's the QR, QR code, scan it. And just last thing, we are constantly moving ahead. We need to be actively listening at what's happening. So we keep thinking what else we could do. Keep, we keep trying to network, that's all, thank you. The file is called Sumat Cast.
join us. Well, now let's begin the presentation. I'll just start talking while they get it ready. Our platform is called Zoom Zoom. It is a collaborative platform that be I began with this video because it sums up the idea, the essence that we wanted to have when we began with Zoom Zoom. We are a work cooperative called FASOLA. We are a strategic consultancy for ecosystemic strategy and innovation. This means that we understand all of the parts as combined as an ecosystem. When we talk about transversal sustainability, it's not just the environment, but also the social environment and as humans with economic activity, economic aspects as well. In our experience supporting and accompanying many projects around the territory based on sustainability, social solidarity, economy, we have found that in general, they faced the same problems or the same three obstacles that they were having trouble overcoming. We found that it was necessary to generate a tool for these projects. It had to be a digital tool for them to have easy access and that the key would be one that we found and there still are many projects that have the feeling of being on their own in a capitalistic world with lots of big corporations and no one else is doing anything similar or there is no supplier that can align with their values or that can join forces with them in their immediate surroundings. That was one of the main problems, to be able to localize themselves on a map, make themselves visible, to find each other, to search for each other and find each other, and to make themselves visible. There's a whole movement of projects that are small or just getting started that have great ideas, very innovative ideas that can generate a lot of impact, and many of them already do, but they're just not visible among themselves so it's hard to generate that collaboration. That's the first step. The second step is to generate a space in which they can collaborate at Zoom Zoom. We have these three parts, geolocalization, a community space, and above all, oriented to generating cooperation, collaboration. We are aimed at projects that are in an entrepreneurial phase, SMEs, public entities, private entities, the social sector. In other words, we want to generate cooperation and generation among all areas of society and through different sectors. There, we are based on the Sustainable Development Goals. This is how we asked, we call it sustainability, but how do we reflect it in practice? We face many dilemmas with this because the first thing you ask and think is, let's present metrics on the users and the entities that are participating, but we decided not to do that. Why not? Because a small project or one that was in an entrepreneurial phase could not have the same metrics as a a factory that had been working for many years and that is working now on environmental sustainability. There would be a metric of uh, CO2 reduction that would be huge and no other one. So we saw that that generated inequality and we understood that first we would have to work for each user, each participant to say what sustainable development goal they were working toward and from there on reflect with everything that is generated through the interaction in the platform, the impact on SDGs, but 
overall, we based this measurement on the sum of it all. And I'm getting off the presentation here, but the name Sum Sum, it was called something else at first. It was not called Sum Sum. That came about in a presentation when someone said something about win-win. And we said, what we are proposing is Sum Sum to sum sum, not in exchange for me to win and you to lose, but that one plus one equals more than two. And we'll have an exchange, but the sum of that exchange will generate an impact in a greater impact than just us two, in a greater environment than just us two. So it's focused more on small scale projects, territorial projects, but we think it's important because they generate well being in a direct way. And many sums of many well beings is what will truly generate global well-being for the environment and in social affairs. That was one part of it, to geolocalize and see each other. Another was to locate suppliers, generating alliances. At some sum, you can propose projects for people to join. There are groups in which you can discuss things. You can launch events. You can publish things, news and so forth. And Another key point with these projects, it's a point for entities and companies, and it's a serious problem, it has to do with marketing, digital marketing, how to market their products digitally. They can do digital marketing in the marketing sense with their own website, e-commerce, and you're competing with the entire world. You're on the same screen. It's very difficult for a small brand of sustainable clothing in a village of the Pyrenees to have their own website and have enough sales to be self-sustainable. And if they start doing digital marketing, they can't pay for that either. How much investment should I make in digital marketing to be visible? you begin to make a list with tons of brands. That's my specialty, that's why I'm speaking of this. So, what can we do? There are marketplaces, but normal marketplaces take uh, a commission per sale. And these are projects and organizations that have a low production capacity, that work with low margins and a product that is usually based on values of respect for social factors and environmental factors has more costs. And so they must be able to finance all this. First, the collaborative side. This is like the community, the back office where they can organize everything, but then you must monetize it. After all, these are economic projects. So we thought that there had to be a marketplace, but with a different model. And we came up with this idea of the town market. It's called town market because it's based on neighborhood markets. The concept is that each project, entity, initiative have its own space. And it's like the neighborhood market. You rent a space or buy it. In our case, you rent it. And then everything that you sell is for you. We don't take any commission, and it is a space for visibility. The idea being that then at Zoom Zoom, we do the digital marketing for everyone. Instead of saying, each one is doing digital marketing with a big investment and a lot of effort, we do it for everyone and share the results. That is the idea behind Zoom Zoom, basically. Right now, we are rethinking things because at first, we always thought that it would be a space that belonged to the people who were participating, that there should be a lot, uh, shouldn't be much presence of our own, that they should make it their own. We would have liked for it to have been free, but as you said, then you have the problem of how can you sustain it? There's a lot of 
movement and activity streamlining behind it so we went to a fee-based model although we didn't feel very comfortable with that either so now we're thinking of a friendly cooperative model for it to be a work cooperative open it to more members that can work from the service side of the platform the maintenance and so forth and that they be consumer partners members they are not just users where you pay a subscription and even though you're in a community you don't feel that it's your own you don't make the decisions you don't have the same level of participation so that's where we are now and that also brings with it many challenges that's a whole other discussion Okay, if uh, you deem it appropriate, we have half an hour and we could open a Q&A or discussion session if anyone would like to ask any questions as we begin this half hour. Hola. Bueno, muchas gracias a, a Okay. Thank you all for your presentation. I mean, we see is projects at different stages and different outlooks and Yeah, we see that, you know, the the approaches were well, they were based on different dynamics and uh, that leads to my question since we're talking about feminist economies and all this. I think that this kind of projects, in the end, they have to go through certain challenges to do with sustainability, you know, to do with you know, surviving uh, uh, as a business or as a model, you know also fostering each other's work to reach other audiences. So I can see in all your projects how you are trying to develop, uh, you're trying to spread knowledge. No? For example, when it comes to trying to sell something or working with new products, there might be a gap, a knowledge gap. No, is that the case? Can you tell me? T could you tell me how you try to reach the, the groups or the communities who are usually not, not really involved? Thank you very much. I appreciate it and enjoyed all your presentations. Um, it's amazing what you succeed to in doing uh, <laughs> worldwide, not uh, only here. I was curious because you offer a lot of support and uh, opportunities. Uh, I'm really curious for you what was the most um, important valuable support uh, that, that you received uh, and um, yeah, you probably also uh, have needs and challenges, and in one way I see that you are a community also among uh, different um, um, cooperativas, like different uh, NGOs. So you support a lot, and what, what would this support look like um, in terms of, I don't know, network? Uh, um, yeah. Thank you. Sí, um, bueno, eh, yeah. first of all, as uh, we've already heard, it's been a pleasure to listen to you all and the importance of programs such as Match Impulsa, which I mean, we've already heard, but also for us, Mensacas, we're also a part of it. It was really important. Will we say that within the social 
solitary economy, something which is difficult is when we try to be an alternative to certain models and stress is laid on the digitalization process or when that is one of our key tools for work. Now, I think I heard that there were nine practices and uh, some of them were only met by 30% of the companies. Have you looked into that? Have you seen, I don't know, some common elements amongst the communities who complied with those parameters or others who, who don't? I don't know. Um, people who work more in more uh, male fields or they have more of a female presence or whether, I don't know, perhaps uh, more formal initiatives are there in an informal way. Is there that kind of analysis? Because speaking from our point of view as men sakas, we realize that because of our lack of knowledge, we come from a social conflict and we've learned a lot on the way. We've seen how, uh, because of our ideology of the project, we've been applying certain policies within the co-op without making them, without adopting them formally. So that's my question, whether there are common traits in the uh, communities that comply with those parameters and whether those uh, traits could shift if we looked into informal adoption rather than formal one. Are we still gathering questions? Yep. Because <laughs> uh, I have a question for um, Eba, Natalia and Mireya. I was thinking about the models that you actually laid out for us. Um, so, in any business thinking, there is a name, profit, exit, especially if you're talking about startups. So, if you would need to identify one sustainability goal that you have, each of you, I would like to hear what this one is. So, this is the question for three of you, and then for you three, <laughs> no, the, the mid group. Um, I've been thinking, for example, about my own society, and I'm coming from Serbia. So if I would like to um, do um, this project in my own environment, I'm not sure if I would succeed. So if you're thinking of preconditions of success, what these would be? Thank you. Oh. There is more. Hola, uh, mi nombre es... My name is Rafael, I am from Brazil. Just last week, I was with the new Secretary for Solidarity Econo Economy of Brazil, and I gave him the example of Match Impulsa for Brazil to implement public policies to promote social and solidarity economy. What advice would you give after this entire process? What advice would you give to Brazil or any other country based on the Match Impulsa experience, public policy, the main learnings that you've taken away from this for technology transfer and for another continent such as Brazil? Just uh, three questions that I'd like to answer for our colleague from New York. We started from scratch, a person sitting in front of a computer. What was basic was the information that reached us and that we sought about Barcelona, but the rest of Spain, but specifically Barcelona has a local development agency that makes a big effort to help local communities develop, and especially with the support of subsidies from the municipal government, from the autonomous government. It was a place where we could get information quickly, but we realized that it does not reach everyone, that information on subsidies and how to apply for them. It's not information that all my colleagues in the music world 
had an easy time accessing. One thing is knowing how to knock on the right doors. That's how we got 90,000 euros of public capital to finance three years worth of work. And these are subsidies. And what we do, since we're not self-sustainable yet, what we do is to think of projects that are sustainable based on the workings of the platform. For example, we have a certain platform. We decide to come up with an album where we try to assist or help with a certain product to get a subsidy for culture, disabilities, or what have you. We always find the way to work through the platform and find a path for financing. And as for what Nuria said, when you talk about 30%, unfortunately, I think we're below that 30%. But we come from um, a struggle to overcome the gender gap. We could not be more feminist in that regard. But we, since we can't yet formalize and be self-sustainable, we can't generate contracts that are fair contracts for everyone. So what we base ourselves on is supporting or paying the women who are working as freelance, self-contracted, self-employed contractors. That's what we do. And for the platform to be self-sustainable, the women who are inside it have to generate content. That's where we find the digital gap. It's very difficult for these women to work with technology without feeling afraid or feeling like an imposter, an interloper, and feeling unable to do it. And that's a problem. And our colleague back there, the researcher, asking about what words we could use to define success. Is that your question for us, more or less? If that's uh, in our case, my case, that global synergies be generated and we work and see, based on those synergies, the level of success we can have. And if two people connect and make a match, as the name uh, implies, for us that is an indicator of success. If you don't mind, I would ask answer Nuri's question directly about that 30% of organizations that are only implementing, that are acting with regard to indefinite work contracts. That is true. On one hand, we observe the records and projects, 27 of 27 organizations who were quite similar amongst themselves in terms of their records and histories marked by being organizations some of which had begun in the times of COVID. They were new projects that had the challenge to digitize. But then beyond those nine, there were a high number of organizations who said they were implementing others. In those others, we observed, we said there is a low percentage for protocol implementation, but there were projects that they said were marking red lines in their internal regimes or in the articles, the bylaws of the organization for transversal egalitarian practices. And we they saw how that had an impact on their digitization. For example, colleagues from FIDMB, another organization, said that they were setting up a specific committee for diversity with this purpose in mind, with the purpose of employees in the community have a number of guarantees. And there were projects that decided to pay women more or other more specific practices, very specific actions that completed those other practices. We have had those in mind. But with relation to the nine practices and other outlooks, we did not observe anything very relevant that could uh, really <coughs> any, uh, spe especially noteworthy characteristic. And that's it. I will give the floor to Maya or Mireya. The 
word that we would use at Swarta Binastardam, I think we would have three. One is desire and compassion and commitment. The team that we're working now is amazing. Help, we get help in the organization, but we need projects like Match Impulsa and other projects that can help us. Cooperatives that are bigger, it's an advantage, but it can also be a disadvantage. And people who want to listen to us. But with the commitment and the desire, I think we can make it. And then what Melissa was saying at SWARTA, in 2021, we approved the strategic planning for the future. One of the points that we had was digitization and digital transformation. In digital transformation, we said we didn't want to leave anyone behind because they didn't know how to use technology in our organization. And last week, our digitization team said that 2,500 people from the cooperative are now able to use the platform, are now able to use mobile phones. The training, we are fortunate to have this as capacity building. If not, nothing of what we do would make sense. And as for what Nuria was saying, I very much agree that even though, whether we be large or small, we often do things that are not taken down in writing. They're just uh, taken for granted. And that's the beauty of these organizations. In Swarta, we had to draw up the equality plan because there are more than 50 employees. Swarta Cooperativa, yesterday, 1,400 people who are members and 4,500 people working. So we're somewhat big. We are a bit big, but the equality plan was, why should we do that if so many of these things are already integrated in our day to day? Yes, we must do them, but you don't have to implement structures when you already have these things working in your day to day. Those three questions, yes, in our case, there's just two of us who do all the consultancy, training, and everything, and Zoom Zoom, I would say protocols and everything. We haven't done the official launch yet. We are doing rounds and rounds of improvement on the technological side, which is quite complicated, so. just because we're unaware. Our kind of activity planning is very difficult, but in our case, also being able to generate indefinite uh, contract. Uh, but all this protocolization when you're small, it's harder to devote that uh, space and time to it. And to answer your question, what word would I use to define success? It would be even in a small proportion, getting, making it possible, thanks to cooperation, to carry out a project related to values, something innovative that is truly understood as if it were a futures market. It could generate much more in the end. We're often talking about people who are reinventing themselves, regenerating their lives, and that's quite a bit. And I think that's it. And I think that's, that's all. One small uh, thing I'd like to add. Much of the fact that we're able to continue to exist is thanks to the fact that we use open source, open source technology, having plugins that are accessible that, and we can get live time and modify the code and upload it to GitHub, and then it's available to everyone. I think that is our greatest asset to make uh, things uh, economical and sustainable. Well, it's not a question, but listening to you 
I do think that there is a, a challenge, which is what to do with the social economy when, when digitalization is so expensive. In a previous research project we did, we asked about funding uh, channels, uh, well, thinking of sustainability not just through you know, uh, monetary funding, but also things that cover your needs. And the use of uh, free software was one of the three elements that came up. So yeah, I think that could be a strategy for this challenge. I mean, it's very hard for the public powers to do that now, but the generation of uh, public common infrastructure like the invention of a free software. Free software is free, but if you use it, you've got to limit yourself to those uses. I mean, you can't just use it and that's it. No, if you're going to use free software, you understand that what you are generating is also free. So the development of public free software by the public administration uh, restricting its use legally protecting it so that um, that can be a competitive edge for the social economy generating a digital pro common around the public uh, uh, element we know that when uh, there is a cooperative development of technology it's more efficient i mean open is more efficient than closed that's how it is in technology so the generation of uh, uh, common goods to cover the digital needs of social economy, offering it as a competitive edge and restricting it to uh, closing it to people who don't work with the principles of social solidary economy. I mean, that is a basic idea. Now, about Nuri's question. A uh, conclusion I drew from the study was that organizations with a feminist identity, that is to say, organizations who, yeah, who have a feminist identity saying, hey, we are feminist economy, they tend to have more feminist practices. I mean, a co-op, just because it is a cooperative, it's not guaranteed that they're going to have feminist practices unless they explicitly say, no, we are feminist. And even then, I'd say, yeah. And uh, there's also this element that sometimes we stick to principle and values, but they're not translated into practices. So it's true that what happens informally, such as, I don't know, emotional care, things like that, they, they don't appear on the quality. Uh, programs also because of the way equality programs are drafted and designed because they stem from uh, a logic of uh, equality and that's it. But uh, I, I do uh, defend formality. I think that when you formalize a process, you are sort of guaranteeing, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to defend just rigidity, but the formalization of rights, the formalization of ways of working is a, a, a feminist uh, almost <laughs> slogan, no? Uh, this is something that almost comes from the 60s ideologies. And I think this is also a problem we have in cooperatives. Sometimes we're not very good at uh, fighting conflicts or conflict is sorted out by um, kicking out those with whom we don't work very well. They're kind of, you know, left out because that's, it would be impossible to do otherwise if you're looking for consensus work. Hang on, I might be going a bit all over the place here, but yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the programs may not reflect the reality, but I think just say, no, but we do it informally. No, I don't think that's the way. Now, about what Rafael was saying. I think that that's a very powerful question and also a very difficult one because what are the conditions for something like match impulsa to be done in Serbia or in Brazil? What would be the requirements? Well, 
Well, it's difficult and powerful. The first thing that comes to mind would be, well, in order to foster social and solidarity economy, you need to have social and solidarity economy to start with so that you can foster it. I don't know what things are like in Serbia, but I think in Brazil, there's a lot. So that's an initial element. Second, second would be, uh, well, to say it as a resource, when we designed Match Impulsa, we did an international benchmarking exercise. And that's a resource. I mean, it's part of our research to see how, uh, well, to see how we could decide much in Pulsa. We looked at other programs in Mondragon. I mean, we're also going to cooperate with them now just to see what they offered. And there is when, where we saw the specificity of much in Pulsa when it comes to feminist initiatives. And uh, I'm, I'm saying this as a resource but also as an element that if you were to work on it in, in Brazil or in Serbia, I'd work on it from the beginning. The transversality of gender, I mean, cross-cutting gender everywhere, parity, I would work on all of that from the beginning, including it at, in the initial formula. Now, I don't know whether this is something that we do here, we do here could be replicated elsewhere, but bringing together uh, an institution that belongs to knowledge and to public government. Um, I mean, I used to say win-win, but I like Zoom Zoom. But I mean, it is either win-win or some sum either. When you have that kind of uh, the academia and the public powers, we have Barcelona Activa and uh, uh, universities. There is something that really generates a win-win at Zoom Zoom. There is uh, something that Barcelona Activa can give you that the university on its own couldn't have. So I think that there is this cooperation that just adds value. I'd say that part of the recipe would be to always, always include research. Because sometimes, I mean, we suffer uh, because, I mean, for us, Match Impulsa is a research uh, method. So we always have a certain tension with research action because when the, you devote so much action to producing a program, then you don't have a lot of time for analysis. And, uh, and, and the public administration is not interested in you publishing. They're not interested uh, because, I mean, what they need to do is to provide the public service. So all of that has to be done on top. You've got to do the whole Match Impulsa program, the services, and then, on top of that, you need to do all the publication and the thesis, and that's a difficult balance to strike, but it's powerful, and we need to have it. And also, that power comes from the mobilization of resources for research, and the fact that the research groups have an organizational ability which is not part of public administration. I mean, the kind of actions that you can do just with the uh, city council, with Barcelona Activa, it's not what you can do with uh, the with academia, with the university uh, team, because they have access to some research resources. So for me, that's also part of the equation. Try to find uh, research resources through Horizon, Horizon uh, Europe, etc. And something else you get from research is access to international knowledge. And that is great. I mean, knowing about all the platform cooperatives which are being done elsewhere, and that helps bringing ideas together. I don't know, there might be new initiatives here who know nothing about what's happening elsewhere. I don't know, we had here the global meeting of uh, riders worldwide, and we were there to kind of map it. That is something else that I see as, uh, as a value element. Then on uh, funding and our programs. A lesson we learned is that crowdfunding works only for relatively small startups. If you want to digitalize or platformize something like Suara, that's different. So I see like two strategies. You need to provide capacity for existing economy and new projects who need 
you know, training, of resources, crowdfunding, that's great, like femme noise. But then you have other type of needs. I'm talking then about big, large, consolidated cooperatives who just want to go digital. And they're not interested in crowdfunding. I mean, Suara is not interested in crowdfunding. They, they wanted the project, but not the crowdfunding element. I mean, they are at a different level. So you can have the strategy, a strategy for large consolidated co-ops who just want to digitalize and, you, and another possibility for smaller cooperatives. They're like two different profiles. Another lesson which I've learned is the value of match tech and match impulsa. You need to map the resources for digital economy in the territory and to match the resources uh, and services for equality practices. And then based on that, you can start designing. Because what's really valuable in the program is to help those matches as I was saying, Suara was not interested in crowdfunding, but they were interested in creating expertise and knowledge on digitalization. So it's a different kind of strategy. And then finally, what I'd say is let's get together, you know, some, some win-win. <laughs> uh, why don't we, and also, I mean, you know, we're on a project called, called Cost P. Will. It's an international network with Rafael and, and Branca. So why don't we? Uh, we can, I don't know if say that, you know, go, go Match Impulsa uh, International, but see how Match Impulsa can be used at international level through Cost P. Will or other whatever. You know, we could generate an action research program internationally through. Uh, this kind of match impulse ideas. I think that would be great. Yeah, the time has come, hasn't it? And at any rate, I think I have more questions than answers, but yeah, we are running out of time. So the only things I could perhaps answer is uh, what we just heard from Mayo. I do believe that uh, I have a particular outlook on social and solidarity economy. But it's very different when you talk about projects whose business model is to make a plat platform or is based on a platform. All of the big network of solidarity economy that requires certain aspects of digitization to not be outside the market. They're very different realities. I am devoted to thinking of Brazil. A lot of the solidarity economy has to do with the primary sector like agriculture, the selling of foodstuffs, the business model is not based on a platform, but it does need certain characteristics of hybridist of digitization to contact suppliers or to have their services posted on a website. But that is a very different need than someone who wants to build a platform based business. Their technological capacities and needs will be very different. I would separate the two with something that Match Impulsa, and you can speak better about this than I can. I don't know the details, but it's something that we've been able to do is to find that path. It's hard to explain the whole process, but Match CN was more like basic digitization and Match TIN was more of a platformization. The business model is inside the platform. With Match and Pulsa, there are certain risks with that. If I were to start over again, now we are looking at a longer term, bigger project to support digitization of solidarity economy in Barcelona. Well, I would begin by separating it much more from the beginning. They're very different realities. From the beginning, I would say platformization requires a lot of money free software and everything, but there's no magic solution. You need a lot of money. If we don't admit that, we would be cheating. So, Solidarity Economy, which has a hard time finding financing, and startups have their own problems, but they have a model that allows you to raise the money, raise the investment. We don't have that. 
it's one of the challenges of the solidarity economy to build those instruments that allows us to find the money, the resources that we need for their very large, unique projects. The autonomous government has more of a budget to devote to these things, but it's a very specific political moment. This may occur with Lula. And I say this from the administration, we must have the instruments that allows us to leverage a lot of financing for there to be technological projects in the social economy. If not, we'll always be playing catch up. And that would be a longer discussion. Just to tell a brief story, we're building a patient capital fund with public private financing for the social economy for work cooperatives. We're going to try to raise 2 million euros, not for a single project, but overall. And the idea is that the administration provides the money, but invests. It's hard to explain. In the administration, you have a budget that is chapter four money for current expenses. But then there's another chapter for investments where you need a certain profitability but here it's much easier to get the budget. So we will devote money, investment money, not from the current expense, which all of the areas are fighting for, and not so much the other kind. So we'll put it there. The SEDA Foundation, the traditional cooperative foundation of Catalonia, which has 11 million euro contribution, and between the public capital and the private capital, we will attempt to have the projects not be based on credit. It's capital that we're going to invest over a certain time. It will have to have a certain profitability. That's a very rough explanation. It's an experiment on how to generate public cooperative resources, not with the logic of a subsidy or a credit, but something between the two to see if that can help, not just digital, but also from the digital to grow social economy, but the lawyers at the municipal government have been working on this to see if we can be successful. Just like match funding is very interesting in terms of financing from the public administration. For me, it would be much more interesting than the typical calls for tenders, which we do many of, which are we are allowed to do by law because it's society, the community that says, I'm supporting this project, because it's not the municipal government saying this project is worth it. The community says, we like this project and we're giving our money to it. You're putting your money behind it. Those are the projects that will double their public financing. It's obviously not valid for all cases and all contexts, but it's a very useful tool. We can't use it. We can't use it. We did it at uh, the university level. It's a very complex legal scenario. We tried it another time. We had a lot of headaches and it was uh, all of this trouble to just get 100,000 euros when the lease that we devote on a yearly basis is a million euros to social economy. So there are great barriers to finding new financing tools and we don't have the answer at this time. And that concludes my remarks. Okay, well, let's conclude here. Thanking all of our colleagues, our speakers, for presenting their projects. Mario, Alberto, and we're sorry to have, have had some technical difficulties, but we'll be back tomorrow for more. Thank you.